my second ACL tear. I want to talk about life a little bit prior to this because this was uh, just, it was a really tough time and there was a lot of kind of like, a lot of emotions, but also just a lot of challenges that came with the tear itself. Because I tore my ACL when I was 15 for the first time uh, playing football. And that was just uh, your regular ACL, like grade three, grade three total tear, um, tore part of the meniscus. It was a rough recovery, but I recovered from that in about 11 months. Um, was back on the football field 11 months later. Doing the stuff that I love, like snowboarding, hiking, skateboarding, golfing, just able to do everything, felt like myself again. Fast forward to college. College was going pretty well. I, like I didn't really have any like hiccups health-wise. I, I really hadn't had any hiccups um, knee-wise since that initial tear and, and surgery. The only time I really suffered with it uh, prior to that was a small little snowboarding injury where I tweaked it, but we were good uh, up until then. And, and I was a pretty active person uh, prior to this. Um, I'd be, I'm such a big snowboarder. I love snowboarding. I love being outdoors. I love stuff like that. So if I was in snowboarding or skateboarding, I was doing something with hiking or backpacking. And uh, I was snowboarding during the season three, four times a week, um, making it a big priority to do that. Um, obviously, I focused on my, on my physical overall health uh, a decent amount, but not as much as I should have. And, and that's kind of the realization that I came to. Um, with the second tear. The second tear happened February 8th, 2021. Um, actually about 25 months ago now, almost 25 months ago now. And um, that put me down for a while. It was a long time. Because uh, traditional ACL rules um every acl tear is different but a lot of acl tears the recovery will be between nine maybe ten months um if you have a if you have a really bad if you have a really bad one if there's a lot of scar tissue that forms and stuff like that um like i said my my prior experience i was back on the football field playing within 11 months so it really wasn't that bad of a of a recovery for me this one was different because i i really messed my knee up the meniscus actually the root of the meniscus was completely ripped out of its socket. That required um, me to not only be recovering from the ACL tear, but the meniscus root tear at the same time. So I tear my ACL snowboarding February 8th, 2021. And um, from there, I was in and out of doctor's offices until June. Um, I had a really negative experience with a orthopedic doctor, not a surgeon, orthopedic doctor in which he told me after many visits and evaluations that he thought it was just a high knee sprain and I would be fine. I told him, I think it's my ACL because I've tore my ACL before, I know what it means. I know what it feels like. And um, he said, no, I think it's gonna be a high knee sprain. I think you'll be good in eight to 12 weeks. So I went to physical therapy, nothing got better, obviously, because my ACL was torn um, and I, decided to get a second opinion after that eight to 12 week span. I went to a doctor, she did Lachman's test on my knee and 30 seconds later, she was like, this thing is destroyed. Your knees, your knees destroyed. It's atrophied so much. Uh, it's just really bad. So I scheduled a surgery. Surgery was August 6, 2021. Um, so it was a really long time between in between surgeries and stuff like that. And, and this time I'm, I'm dealing with a little bit of arthritis in the knee, the knee's not very clean. Um, and so I get the surgery and recovery that second time around was much different. Uh, it was, it was hard. Um, there was, I had to go six weeks not non weight bearing. So no walking at all, no putting weight on it at all, nothing but crutches everywhere. Um, just from bed to bed and being me, being as active as I am and as much as I love just outdoor sports, whether it be skateboarding, snowboarding, hiking, backpacking, just, just anything in general, um, couldn't do it. And that, that was really tough. And so <clears throat> I found myself in a very, a really like hopeless state, but um, I think that a lot of us who go through a journey of suffering really come out on uh, the other side, having understood the human experience a lot more. And not that my um, situation of suffering is even comparable to what some people are facing. But one of the biggest um, 
truths of life is that there's going to be some type of inevitable suffering. And I was able to really kind of like develop my um, philosophical perspective on on what my life was going to be like and, and how I was going to formulate uh, just my direction for what I wanted to do in, in this time. And I had had a very strong direction prior, but I think that this experience really just helped me to zone in on how I was going to focus on on serving the Lord's people through what I did vocationally um, and what I just did outside of uh, my vocation, just in life and in, in that perspective. So you get to think about a lot of things whenever you're just in bed for weeks and weeks and months, kind of isolated from a lot of people. And it was around this time that uh, I started physical therapy again. And I, in my lifetime, I've been in physical therapy for probably 25, 26 months total, um, just recovering from various injuries uh, that had to do with my knee and stuff. And this one, this one was a beast, man. This one, this one was crazy. Uh, I went to physical therapy for probably the first five to six months and was improving albeit very slowly because there had just been so much muscle atrophy. Um, and I kind of had to really take it upon myself to not just rely on the, on the therapy, but also really just get in the gym and go after it and say that, hey, I'm going to commit myself to a much healthier um, lifestyle, a much more disciplined lifestyle, because I knew that if I didn't, I would end up suffering in the end because there's not many 21-year-olds at, at the time, I was 21, um, who have arthritis and multiple knee surgeries <laughs> under their belt. So Chuck's smiling in the background because of that. But, um, but yeah, so I, I really recognized that, hey, this was, the, this was my, my uh, sink or swim moment, and I, I decided I was going to swim. And um, recovery continued and, and still does continue. I still have a lot of pain. Um, there's, a lot of, there's some stuff that I can't do, but I, I, I recently started snowboarding for the first time. But uh, for the first time in two years, actually, just last month, that was a pretty surreal experience. And it continues to be surreal. And there's, there's still aspects of recovery that are going on because it's, it's one of the most damaged parts of my body. But I think the, the beauty in this entire experience is that through in and out of the physical therapy offices, I was in three different physical therapy offices for this surgery. I, I visited two more with my previous surgery. Like I said, I've been in for... 26 months total um and my knee problems are not going to ever go away it's just going to be a, a fact of life but the beautiful thing about that is that it's given me such a sense of perspective of you know the snowboarding the um the hiking the backpacking the, the stuff like that that's that's important that that's that's fun stuff and it, it it's a part of my life but um some of the stuff that i experienced in that recovery like how am I going to serve the Lord and his people? And, and what am I going to do? How am I going to give myself to other people who are in similar situations of suffering um, and might not have an out? And, and I know that this is, it's, it's very in, incomparable to the experiences of the many people that are out there, but it, it really gave me a sense of drive and a sense of purpose. And Hindsight being 2020, as it always is, um, I can look back and say that this was like an experience that I'm so glad I went through. I wouldn't have had the, the wisdom to take on that, that disciplined mindset, live in a disciplined way. Um, I wouldn't have been able to kind of interrogate myself, be very introspective about myself during that period of time, ask myself the, um, the questions of life that this new creation, this new reconciliatory work that God is doing um, in us, through us, and as a body. So it's, it's, it's been a really long ride. My injury is so minuscule in the grand scheme of things. And while it might limit me in some aspects of life, I don't skateboard as much as I used to. I don't snowboard as much as I used to. I don't hug as much as I used to. It, it, it made me so much more grateful for those things when I did them. And one of the other things that just made me so grateful for is the people that have been around me and surrounded me through that. I mean, from Charles and my other buddy, Caleb, dragging me to the gym on days that I don't feel like it, um, to my, my wonderful grandma and, and, and parents and family for just 
being there through all this with me. I mean, people were literally carrying me with my leg around. Like it's just it's stuff like that that you don't realize how dependent you are on on, on those who love you, and you don't realize what agape love is until you until you need it and you're in that situation. And it was it was a beautiful beautiful experience, and I would not trade places with anybody or trade knees with anybody for the world because of what it gave me. Um, I hope that through my suffering, uh, just beautiful things can kind of come out of it. And in, in my mind, they absolutely have. And my appreciation for these guys, the, the experience that I have has, has seriously just blossomed and in, in, in displayed itself in a whole new plethora of ways, which I am so thankful for. So again, would not trade knees with anybody in the world.